Sky High, The True Story of Maggie Gee by Marissa Moss, illustrated by Carl Angel. When I was little, something special happened every Sunday. Our families went to baseball games or the movies, but not mine. Instead, we would drive out to the airport. We weren't going on a trip or meeting someone from a flight. We went to watch the airplanes. For us, nothing could be as exciting as watching the planes take off. We loved how they bumped clumsily along the runway, only to suddenly leap up, break free from the ground, and soar away, far away, until the black speck of the plane disappeared. My brothers, sisters, and I would lick our only on Sunday lollipops and tip our heads back, letting the roar of the engines fill our ears. I loved how the vibrations echoed in my bones, just being there, being part of it all, made me feel big and powerful. I liked to search for my favorite pilot, Amelia Earhart. She had flown all the way across the ocean by herself, and I wanted to be just like her. Once I'm sure I saw her. When I waved, she saw me and waved back. It had to be her. I didn't know of any other women pilots back then. Just Amelia Earhart. And me. Well, I would be a pilot someday. I told my brothers and sisters stories of how I would fly across the oceans, over deserts, and around the world. I described flying around the Eiffel Tower, tracing the line of the Great Wall of China from the air, looping over the pyramids. Will you take me with you? Lucy, my youngest sister, begged. No me, demanded my brother James. I'll take all of you, I said, if you pay me with one Sunday lollipop. It was a high price, I knew, but flying in an airplane, that would be worth it. When my mother heard my offer, she laughed. Save your lollipops, she said. Maggie is just telling you stories. Some stories are true, and some are made up. Now I tell true stories. And then she would tell us about life in China, where she and my father had lived before they came to America. She talked about fetching water from a well when it was so cold that the ice had to be broken before she could dip in her bucket. She talked about festivals when the whole village danced in the streets in bright silk clothing and tables were set up outside for everyone to eat together. Her stories felt as far away as China and nothing like our life in California. They were like dreams, beautiful and mysterious, impossible to touch. My stories are truer than that, I thought. One day I would be able to taste and smell and feel my stories. One day I would make them come true. When grandmother heard my stories, she said, I tell stories that are already true, not yet to be true. Sometimes she would tell us about China, like my mother did, but mostly she told stories about the farm she and grandfather had here. She told of bad luck weather and shriveled crops and good luck weather and rich harvests. She told of plums as big as her fist and hail as big as our toes. These stories felt real to me, but they weren't mine. Many Sundays passed, and now we were too old for lollipops. I didn't tell stories anymore, but I still dreamed of flying. Until a nightmare happened, a war, a very big war. So big, the whole world was fighting and it was called World War II. Everyone did what they could to help. My brothers joined the army, and my mother worked as a welder building Liberty ships to transport troops. You can work here with me, she said. Do some good for your country. I will work for my country, I agreed, but in my own way. Now is my chance to fly. I had read about a group of women pilots called the WASP, or Women Air Force Service Pilots. They flew planes on training missions and ferried bombers to military air bases. 
I knew right away that I wanted to join them. I would be doing something important for the war and I would be able to fly, if I could only earn my wings. First, I had to go to flight school to learn how to fly a plane. That summer, two girlfriends and I bought a car together. It didn't matter that none of us knew how to use it yet. I taught myself to drive on the long trip to flight school. The first time I got to fly alone, to solo, was just as I had imagined. The earth rolled beneath me, green and yellow and brown, and I was free in the clouds. As fields and barns rushed by under me, I thought of grandmother's stories of her farm. My grandparents had worked such land. Now here I was high above, plowing the air. I was a good pilot, good enough to be chosen to go on for training as a wasp. The girlfriends who had driven out with me weren't picked, but at least now they knew how to drive and could get themselves home. I stayed behind, eager to be up in the air as much as possible. Wasp training was much tougher than flight school. We did the same intense work the male pilots had to do. I learned to parachute and make emergency landings. I learned to loop the loop and fly low over cows' heads, surprising them. It was hard and tiring and wonderful all at once. The day that I earned my wings and was made a wasp, I was so proud that I felt as if I could fly without an airplane. I sent my mother a postcard. All I wrote was, some stories are true, some are not. This is a true story. My family's stories flew with me, but now I was living out my own true stories. Some missions were fun, like flying in formation with other WASP, waiting for the male fighter pilots to attack us. They were also in training and didn't attack our planes, just the banners behind us, but they used live ammunition, even for practice. For me, it was like playing tag in the air. Other missions were scary. Once I had to fly across the country late in the day. As the sun slipped lower and lower and the sky grew darker and darker, I couldn't see to fly. I needed to land, but bigger planes churned the air next to me with their giant propellers and my small plane almost tipped over. I landed all right, but I did bump into another plane on the runway. The other pilot and I both stepped out on shaky legs to see if the planes were okay. When the pilot saw me, he tensed up and stared hard. There were plenty of other wasps, so I knew that he wasn't surprised to see a woman climb out of the cockpit, but he must have been startled to see an Asian face. I could tell that he was mistaking me for an enemy pilot, a Japanese kamikaze or a spy. I had heard it all before, but this time I didn't get angry. Instead, I smiled and said a big hello. Uh, you're American? He asked nervously. Born and bred, I answered and offered my hand to shake. Well, don't that beat all, he said. Never thought I'd see the day. I felt like an exhibit at the county fair, a two-headed cow, the amazing Chinese-American wasp, but only for a minute. I got back in my plane and once more was a pilot plain and simple. I felt big and strong again, and no one could take that feeling away. The days passed with me soaring high in the heavens, looping the loop and rolling for fun, but working hard too. I was helping my country to win the war, but I was also helping myself, making my own stories and dreams come true. Now I tell these stories to my children and grandchildren, and my tales must seem as far away to them as China. They cannot imagine such a war. They cannot imagine being one of only two Chinese American pilots in the WASP. They cannot imagine trying to fly at night with only your eyes to guide you. But my stories aren't yet to be true anymore because I earned my wings. Now they're already true.